So if you don't want to keep taking this hole cutter off, removing the arbor so you, to get this piece of wood out, just take a couple of screws, impact driver or combi, and just screw them in to the disc. Let's do one on each side. Get in the cable from there, over to there would be relatively simple normally except there's a fireplace in the way which means there's a concrete base underneath there which I can't obviously do a straight line for and even using rods I'm not going to be able to get it all the way around. I'll give it a go to start with but if that fails what I'm going to do is I'll run the rod from there all the way over to this point here where that hole has been cut out. I can then run it across to those ones and then take it back across and then I'll just pull the excess cable back through. It's a bit of a long-winded way of doing it but that's really the only option I have other than cutting more holes into the floor which I really don't want to do. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tape on this little torch because I can't actually see where the end of this is going to end up. And by putting the torch on the end, it means I stand half a chance of when I look through the hole, I can see where the light is, and hopefully I can either grab it by reaching my arm all the way through, or I can use another rod like this, but with a hook on the end of it. Right, well, let's give it a go and see how lucky I am. Now, one thing I do love about these rods is because they're so thin, they're also very, very flexible. But the flip side to it is, is that if I'm not careful, you can actually break them. You see, a lot of this I have to do by feel. And I can feel that's got jammed already. Let me get got past whatever that was. So I'm just going to keep adding these rods on one at a time. And incidentally, these rods are one metre long, so that always give me an idea of how far I've gone or how far I would need to go initially to get to where I need to get to. So I feel like that's got jammed again. So it looks like I might, oh, no, clear off. I'm hoping I don't have to go with plan B, but we shall see. Right, let's go to the other hole and see if I can find the other end of it. Oh, oh well, what do you know? Is the end of it. So I'm going to shove my arm through and reach that and pull it out. Oh, just heard the rod move. That's just a case of can I grab it? There we go. Having the torch on the end made that so much easier. So what I'm going to do now is I've just got to attach the two and a half mil cable to the other end, put it through. And there we go. So all the cabling is in. And what I've done as well is over here, where I've got the ring circuit that's gonna come up into the stud work which is yet to be built. The old spur that was from behind us back there, that's that white cable. And I brought that here so that can come into the double socket with the new ring circuit so I can cap it off safely. And it means that when I do get to get to that single socket that's on the other side of that wall there, I can actually test it properly to make sure it's definitely that cable and it means I haven't got to pull up any brand new carpet or anything like that to access it under the floor. Um, so moving along, we can see that this one's been done as well. And this is probably the messiest one of the whole lot. You see the cabling's all been done here as well. And uh, what I have done on a few places, and I've done it with that one over there as well, where these holes have been so deep, 
um, where the original back box was from uh, the previous job and uh, where I had to cut out a bit wider here as well. I've just taken some plasterboard, filled the hole up, otherwise I'm going to spend days and days filling it little bit, little bit at a time with filler until it builds up enough that I can finish the wall off. So the other thing that I have done is this. So I've had these little covers for some time now and they're called this spotlight and socket and switch bead and essentially it's so that you don't get messes like that you put that over it you skim and fill it so you're supposed to end up with a finish like that so time will tell if this will actually work or not but the principle is is that i mean they're just very thin plastic really and you obviously fix it into place like i've done here with the accessory screws i've had to knock a little bit off around the edge to allow the filler to go on. So that will go on, that will go off dry and hard, and I can knock it off, cut this box out, that'll come out, which should leave me with the perfect finish. So that's essentially what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna mix up a bit of muck, put it on the walls as best I can, smooth it off, um, and if I can't, I just have to wait for it to dry and sand it back because I'm not a plasterer by any stretch of the imagination. Once all that's done, I'm gonna take those covers off, see if they, how well they actually work, um, and then at that point, I can start wiring things up. Well, contrary to common belief, electricians do know how to clean up after themselves. And as I was sweeping the muck out from down here, I noticed a nail right here, and it looks like it's been caught right through a piece of cable. So I'm just gonna dig this out and find out what it actually is. And every toolkit needs a body driver. Oh, <laughs> 